Hi, welcome to the channel. Today we have a brand of watch I've never actually handled before. This is a Vostok. Now they are a Russian um, watchmaker. They started off in the early 40s and it's then round about in the early 2000s they started supplying watches out to a company in Lithuania and that then later became Vostok Europe. And we're talking a tiny amount of people who work at this place. They actually only employ, well, once I read once, it's only something like seven watchmakers. So it is a really tiny, you know, kind of small, interesting brand. And not something I've seen very often. So this one here is the Vostok Europe N1 Rocket Dual Time. Now I believe this was limited edition though, I think it was only about 3,000 made. And you know, it could be one reason why I've never seen one before. But it is quite an interesting watch. And since it is a relatively cheap watch as such, I think it's got a lot going for it. If we get into the size of the watch here, we have a 42 millimeter case. It's 14 mil thick, but it doesn't feel like 14 mil. It's, it's kind of strange. And 51 lug to lugs and the strap size is 20. Now I must say before we start, this isn't the original strap. This is the original strap um, which came with it. But I must admit, I think um, my friends put a much nicer looking strap on there. Plus it doesn't taper down quite so much and I'm, I'm not a big fan of, um, if anyone follows my channel, I'm not a fan really of uh, tapering straps. A lot of you might know that. So this one I must admit does look a lot better. And I think it's quite a a handsome sporty looking watch really the dial itself we zoom in a little bit there as you can see it plays on the light really well we've got a gloss finish especially this inner um, circular part in the center and then as it comes out to this outer track where you have though both the minute and hour markers on there it has like a radial brushing light around there which catches the light all in different ways. It almost looks like a vinyl record as it goes around there. Now, the actual hands have got a nice bit of lumen there, actually. If I put the, um, you can see it, I'll put, drop the picture in or something. But the lumen isn't that bad at all. It looks pretty good. Now, the actual hands are, say, black with filled with lumen. The second hand is a nice red. And what we have here, is the dual time aspect to it because as we can see we've got Vostok Europe dual time 24 hour automatic 32 dual. Now this is quite, for me it's the first ever 24 hour complication I've come across where you can't actually adjust it. So it's a bit weird, it was quite new for me to try and figure out first of all how I've got to use this but you've got the chapter ring air with a nice um, sort of like a 45 degree angle coming down there and you have a 24 hour scale. Now, how you could use this it would be a, maybe a day and night indicator. But if you actually want to set a 24 hour time, you actually have to use the bezel to set it. So this is constantly running with the minute hand, an hour hand, so you can't adjust it. So all you would do is set your time that way. So that's, it's a simple and cost effective way of doing it. So it, if I, you'll get the idea now, if I unscrew the crown, now I must say the crown is stiff and it only has about a quarter of a turn. If you can see that now, very well, very stiff. Let me just get a better purchase on it. Now, you can see that's gone. That's it, that's all it has. It's not quite great, it only just bites. Now, if I was to pull this out, so that is, that's manual wind, so that's all good. If I pull it out, it doesn't hack. What I mean by that is the second hand is still um, going around the track doing its thing. So setting the time accurately can be a problem. Now sometimes, I don't know if you can do it with this, yeah, if I apply back pressure, you can sometimes just hold the second hand in place. But you can only do this when it's on a relatively low charge. So if I then pull it out, that, so that literally has only got one position. It comes out, manual wind, and then all you can do is set the time. And you see, when I set the time, the GMT hand moves. 
so you can only use the indicator on the bezel as a second time zone but it's a nice touch it's better than not having it so it's quite interesting now if I put its crown you can see there and that's in so it is very um, yeah uh, problematic maybe now the actual crystal has got a very lovely dome to it I think that is absolutely lovely that's a lovely view of the dial actually there so I really quite like that um, crystal the dome at least the only problem is it is a mineral uh, glass and the way it's catching the light I don't really think there's much anti-reflective coating on there so as I've said before as we come to the bezel it has this nice aluminium insert and the, mo the movement it's not bad there's a little bit of movement uh, back and forth play to it but it is actually it's not too bad but I, for all it's kind of you know little quirks I do kind of like it I think it is quite a cool watch as we come out here you can see that you can actually you know the the bezel is actually integral to the case I mean the case design that is and it flows quite nicely with it the polishing on the side isn't great and to be fair this is an old watch now so it has been bashed around a little bit but it's okay the crown unsigned but as we have discussed it is screwed down albeit just the what's nice with this watch is when you turn it around the movement just looks great it is a really funky little movement now i was trying to find out stuff about its movement because i read that some places say it's a 31 hour power supply of uh, sorry power reserve and others say it's 37 so I just did it a few days ago and wound it up fully and left it and I actually got 41 hours out of this watch um, okay the last hour wasn't very accurate at all because obviously it's losing its um, charge and it's struggling to keep an actual uh, you know the hands moving how it should be but it is actually not a bad looking movement we have blued screws I don't know if they're properly blued or if they're just painted and what it looks like there when you see those two wheels I'm presuming that has bi-directional winding now one quirk of this watch is its beat rate its beat rate is 19,800 so what that means you're actually getting 5.5 beats per second which is a bit of a strange one so yeah it, it's a, a little bit different to uh, most watches the actual caliber I should have stated is a 2426 and yeah it, it's kind of I say it is funky it's a little bit different it does actually mention on the back, I believe, about the limited edition. So number 1,659 out of the 3,000 made. And it is water resistant to 100 meters. So it's quite a capable watch, really. And it's just something different. This watch, as I say, is called the M1. Vostok tend to name all their watches after something in Russian history, uh, rocket sense, whatever. And the M1 was actually a massive rocket. It was the Russian competitor to the Saturn V. I think it flew in, the, uh, it took off in the 60s until the early 70s. So yeah, they, they do like to do that. They do like to name their, their watches after something in history. So there you go. Let's actually put it on my wrist so you've got an idea. Uh, zoom out. I'm wearing my custom Seiko 5 I, I took apart and uh, modded. Let me get that off. That's a gas gas bone strap if anyone's interested. Now let's see. And I think for a relatively cheap watch, that just looks pretty damn fine. One thing I would say is my friend Chris, he did say when he got it, it did need regulating. And he did it the good old fashioned way, as in, man, you take it off adjust it wait a day or so and see how it's done and to be fair it's running pretty well at the moment but yeah it just looks pretty funky a little bit different so i hope you guys like the review and i will see you at the next one so all the best and stay safe out there take care bye